Hello everyone, I'm Kerskop, and welcome to Dungeon Ride. In this episode, which is the first part of a double episode, I will show you how to make a top-down view of a city map. These two episodes will be advanced tutorials, focusing on creating an entire map in one setting. I do intend to make tutorials focused on more basic techniques in the future, so if you're watching this tutorial and have any questions, or things you would like to get a more detailed approach on in the future, feel free to ask me about those in the comments. Before we get started, I would like to touch briefly upon what I will call the cheesy motivational quote law. That one that tells you, time is precious, wasted wisely. When you're creating something, it's very important to focus on what matters. What is it that you're trying to achieve? Once you've figured that out, try to keep it in mind when you're creating, and don't be distracted by things that might make you lose confidence. Picking a route of approach in advance helps eliminate these hesitations and helps you pick your battles along the way. Focus on getting things done instead of questioning your every move. But now that you know the importance of planning things out ahead of time, let me tell you what I had in mind before I started working on this complex city map. Having created several city maps before, I wanted to try and experiment somewhat when creating this one. Instead of just making a two-dimensional top view of the city, I wanted to sketch both a two-dimensional and three-dimensional view of the city in order to help me figure out its structure. As the city would feature both distinct vertical and horizontal elements, wanting to create something functional above artful, I decided I would choose saving time above making sure that each individual element in my map was completely unique making a mental schedule of the process that was necessary to bring all my ideas to life. For now, let's start sketching, and I'll tell you how the two-dimensional map of Hellhest came into being. Designing a mountain city map starts with creating a foundation, the drawing of a mountain. From there on, I started hacking away, using some of the actual techniques a sculptor would use to sculpt the basic shape of my city. You will notice that I am drawing the city from a front view, Something that helps my mind ease into the process, giving it time to figure out the design as I work. Creating fancy elements like maps, I like to find a nice middle ground between the realistic and the fantastical. Like this city built on top of two massive hands that are cradling it from beneath. My motto being, give something enough flavor for dungeon masters to play around with, but make it realistic enough so people can still navigate its structure. Once I finish my initial sketch of the city, I use it as a point of reference to draw my map, further tweaking the design in order to help my brain put the pieces of the puzzle that I am designing together. This second sketch makes it possible for me to figure out how I will draw a more dynamic side view of my city. I draw that second design on top of my first design, with my two-dimensional map in mind, and slowly start combining what I've learned from my initial sketches. Going into more detail and putting it into perspective with a sketch of the surroundings and a backdrop. I still wasn't sure into how much detail I would be going at this point. Putting it on paper would help me figure out how much detail was needed to make it convincing enough. These first sketches are all very loose and focus on getting a feel for what makes it look good instead of focusing on what makes it look structurally sound. Once I'm happy with the conceptual design, I can get into the structural design by using basic shapes to figure out the exact layout of my map and then slowly adding detail. Getting the hands right in this specific illustration was pretty important and while I usually try to find a great image online to work with, here I just took a picture of my own hands to get both a top and a front view of the same shape. Working from the center of my city, the massive citadel or keep, and slowly expanding outward. First, that central courtyard with the keep in the cradle of my hands. Then the markets, temples, garrisons, and the two arching bridges overhead that extend from my central courtyard, eventually moving on to the housing districts and gates below. Using simple tricks like copy-pasting areas of my sketch to accelerate the process. Once I finish the large chunk, I will do a horizontal flip to make sure the design feels sturdy. Mending errors by using the liquify tool in the filter menu. After that, a quick sketch of the rest of the mountain, followed by another couple of horizontal flips and uses of the liquify tool, 
finalizing the sketches of both my three-dimensional view and my two-dimensional map of the city. Putting the two of them side by side gave me the inspiration to feature both of them in the final design of my map. Knowingly settling me up with a ton of more work than I originally had planned to put into this map. Actually breaking my own law of spending my time wisely in the process. Something I will expand upon in part 2, where I draw the three-dimensional view of my city. For now, let us continue working on the two-dimensional aerial view. I start by hiding all the other layers and zooming in on the bottom part of my city. Starting there is in the completely random choice, as I want to start somewhere that has enough detail for me to figure out the eventual design of the map, but not the part that features the focal map of my map. I'm still warming up at this point, and want to get into the mindset of the design before I start on the most important features. Once I've completed my walls, I start sketching a street grid with a larger brush, making it much easier to figure out where I will be drawing the blocks of houses in this part of the city. I use simple rectangular shapes as a basis, and then draw in smaller triangles for protruding windows, square for chimneys, anything to add variation to the houses in the city. I will copy and paste some of the houses, and even blocks of houses to get things done quicker. Drawing the road for this area didn't really turn out the way I wanted to turn out. I started off by drawing a segment, and copy pasting that one segment of the road over and over, filling in the blanks where necessary. Only it didn't feel like it matched the idea in my head. So I started from scratch working on a road that looked like it was unfinished or underdeveloped, giving it a more distinct look. Once I was finished with my housing district, I copied and flipped it over to the other side of the map. Using basic shapes I could now link the two halves of the city and divine the space for the center of my map. Using smaller circles for the courtyard between them and a larger one for the elevated part of the city between the hands. At first I started working on the hands without any reference image, and they didn't turn out all that great. This is something I would let slide if it wasn't such an important piece of my art. But seeing as those hands are the focal point, I knew I had to ditch my first effort and start over. This time using the reference photos I took earlier to help guide me through. Once I had those hands in place, I could start working on filling in the blanks, building each layer as I go. I always feel a lot more confident once the canvas starts filling up and the design starts gaining shape. Copy pasting a lot of my work to advance even faster. The map I am creating is supposed to be functional, making it look good as secondary. So I tend to take the easy route whenever I can. In the end it will still look great and you can actually get to using your map much quicker. Getting to the second part of the inner city, the market located underneath the elevated center, you will see that I will use more basic shapes for the layout, but I don't tend to do that for each individual house. When I was doing the housing district I didn't do that either, but I was using the shift key to draw simple rectangles. Here I chose to just wing it, making it more of a challenge not to make mistakes, but again focusing on getting things done fast instead of focusing on precision. Drawing an area like this, I try to visualize a quick layout of the map as I go. For the first year, I wanted room for shops and basic structures like a smithy, with at its center a building that could serve as a church of some sort. The idea being that clerics would be able to gain access to the upper part of the city through a hidden entrance somewhere in their church, allowing the structure of the design to take shape while I'm drawing. I do plan out the basic structure in advance, but when it comes to filling in details, I try to let the drawing come to me, drawing what feels right in the grand scheme of my design. I think if you force yourself to map out every detail on paper in advance, that you might run into difficulties as you start bringing your ideas to life in a drawing, leaving room for the creative mind to play, or room for unforeseen problems, will make it a much more enjoyable experience. After I had finished, I simply copy and pasted the entire area, flipped it over to the other side, and I was done with the basic layout of the city. Able to move on to the final details, like a staircase moving down the mountain, 
and a bridge over the surrounding river. Then to the river itself, the trees, and finally I could finish my line work by giving shape to the rest of the mountain. When the line work is finally finished, I get to move on to the part I'm least proficient at, and that is the coloring. Selecting a palette from my finished 3D drawing, I start by filling in the large shapes of the illustration, going into more detailed coloring as I progress. What is most important for my technique is getting that first layer right, whether that is precisely filling in your artwork, or coming at it from a more nonchalant approach leaving some spills here and there. You want to make sure that your first layer represents how you want the final piece to look like. Once you've done that, you can start by adding masks and an effect layer, adding variation to the coloring before you start shading. You can see me do that for several of the houses in my city, giving them some distinct coloring here and there. You could very easily change every single roof like this without much effort. It is up to you how eclectic you would like your city to look. Once you've finished with the detailed touches and color, put all of those layers into a single map and then copy that layer to use for your shading. Put a nice hue saturation layer on top of that and then start shifting the slider for the U to increase the blues and add more darkness to it. You can try to add a curves or a levels layer, but you might end up making the shadows look more like dirt that way. If you're happy with the coloring, start painting away in that mask layer to make light break through the darkness. I find it's much easier to draw shadows this way, focusing on where the light is coming from instead of spending hours selecting the right colors. Now you will see something that has always been somewhat of a hassle for me, is now one of my favorite parts of creating a piece of art. Painting light like this is really a lot of fun, giving your map a more three-dimensional look. Next you will see that I add another layer of darkness, alt-clicking my mask to make sure it's invisible, and then painting in darker shadows wherever I felt it was necessary, putting the final touches on my two-dimensional map. Well that's it for me folks. I hope you enjoyed this first part of my tutorial on making a city map. If you did, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more. I've also provided links to more of my work in the doobly-doo down below. Until next time.